Hey everyone, welcome to Wednesday Wisdom. I am your host, Misha Johnson, and I am so glad that you are here. So I host these weekly segments every single week because I know how easy it is in life for all of us to focus all of our energy on everything in our life except for the most important part of our life, our spiritual side. And the reason why I say that is because if we are focusing on everything in our life except for our spiritual side, then it doesn't really matter how great everything is going in our lives. We are not going to feel balanced. We are going to feel unbalanced. I've experienced it in my own life, but don't even take it from me. Go to the library, go to the bookstore, and take a look at how many books are written on people who have living testimony, who have lived to tell about how their lives had seemingly everything by the world's standards. They had the jobs, they had the titles, they had the positions, they had the influence, they had the power, they had the money, they had this, they had that, what have you, and they were miserable. How can that happen? But then you can have other people who, by the world's standards, don't have a lot. And yet they are peaceful and they are happy and they are filled to the brim and overflowing with joy. What is that? That is balance. That is a peace that transcends understanding. That is tapping into our spiritual side. And yes, it matters. I have my own testimony, like I said, millions of others do too, and that's why I talk so much about how important it is that we put in our spiritual training. So, for the those of you who have joined me this Wednesday, I'm seeing some of you right now, Sam, Christopher, Lance, Nicola, all of you who are joining me, who I'm seeing you pop up, I'm watching you right here, and I'm watching you over to my left as well. I am so proud of you, I'm so glad you are here. Please leave me your comments. I'm going to get to that more in just a moment. But I also want to say that if you're not joining us live, that's okay too. These videos are always up so you can watch them wherever, whenever, and you can always comment. So if you happen to be new to these Wednesday Wisdom videos, by the way, I will be giving practical kind of everyday advice. They do have a scriptural foundation because I have to get the wisdom from somewhere. I myself am just a mere mortal I need to be getting it, this life-changing, life-transforming information from somewhere. So it is absolutely scripturally founded. And I will also say this, if it is implemented into your life, it will absolutely start to transform you and your mind from the inside out. And that's when you start to really see things change in your life. And I know because I experienced it firsthand. Um, And if there's, by the way, something that you hear today that you think can help someone else, please share this video. Like I said, some of you will watch this video later and some of you uh, are tuning in live. Hi, Patrick. Hi, Dave. Jamar. Matt Payne. All of you joining us. We are so glad that you are here. Please feel free to comment anytime on your thoughts, your feelings, your prayer requests. You are in wonderful company. So let's get to it, shall we? We are still in the book of Isaiah. And the reason why we are still in that book is because we are chronologically going through it. And I can't seem to get out of it without a little nugget that I feel is so important that I bring to you. So we're going to be talking about something that, by the way, I'm just going to go kind of off my notes here for a second and say this. We're going to be talking about something that isn't all flowers and candy. But sometimes when we are laying the foundation, transforming our lives from the inside and our minds, our lives and our minds, from the inside and transforming them on the outside, so not only are we transformed on the inside, but then outside our lives are showing that fruit, some of the, th- some of the things that we need to really implement into our soul and some of the things that we really need to understand and take root in us are not always... Um, easy. They're not always uh, the easiest conversations and they're not always the most fun either. And something that we're going to talk about today, I'm going to be just honest with you. um, It's not the most fun, but it is absolutely essential as you and I in our spiritual training, as we go forward, start to really comprehend and understand it. I just put up a tweet this morning, uh, early this morning when I was reading the Bible, I was actually reading the book of Galatians 
But in there, and again, we're going to be talking about on this Wednesday wisdom uh, from the uh, book of Isaiah. But I was reading from Galatians this morning, Galatians, as some of you say. And it was, what I was reminded of is how God's perfect timing is not our timing. And usually God is in no hurry either. That can be a little bit annoying to us because we want something and we want it right now. But it is his, it, it is in his, and it will be, regardless of what we think about it, in his perfect timing. But this is the one thing that we can trust about God, is that he is always laying the foundation perfectly because he cannot build a building on top of that foundation until it is ready and until it is sturdy. And what I mean by that, why I'm talking about that right now, is because what we're going to talk about today isn't maybe the most fun and the most glamorous conversation, but it is essential for laying the concrete for us to get our lives in a position where we can build those buildings on top of it. And that's when we see some really awesome things happening, okay? Ah, uh, Keith, Kevin, Joe Diaz, Michelle Elizabeth, so glad all of you are here. So again, we're in the book of Isaiah, and we're going to be talking about the difference uh, in the feeling condemnation versus feeling convicted. And then we're going to be talking a little bit about f being free from shame. What is the difference between condemnation, the feeling of condemnation, feeling condemned in something, and also feeling that feeling of conviction? When we really understand those two things, it's going to really help us out in our emotional state, our mindset moving forward. Super, super important concrete being poured. So I'm so glad that you are with me. Very important topic today. I'm going to be, I'm going to, I know that I have you for a brief lunch break, so I'm going to be going through this uh, fairly quickly. Please leave me all your questions as well. So it is almost impossible uh, for us to move forward, to move upward and onward in life if we are feeling any of these feelings, condemnation, feeling filled with a shame, we're feeling shame, ashamed, feeling doubtful, fearful, and we're feeling this feeling of being ashamed or condemnation because of something most likely of something in our past or currently that we've been wrestling with. Very, very difficult to move upward from those feelings if we don't first understand where their root is, what it is. So this is a little bit of a foundational message, one that we absolutely must understand. <clears throat> we have to wrap our mind around this. We have to know about this because it is a firm bottom to basically everything else that we will build upon. So I'm going to say this uh, very, very plainly. If you are feeling the feelings of condemnation or shame today, if that's filling your conscience, it is not from God. And I'm going to say that again. If you are feeling feelings of condemnation or feelings of shame about something today because of something either in your past or currently in your present <clears throat> that maybe you did or happened to you that you're just feeling really bad about, that feeling of condemnation is not from God. Okay? In fact, I'm going to I'm going to say this very plainly too. Uh God sent his only son Jesus to die for all of us, to pay for the price of our sins so that we wouldn't have to live in this life feeling condemned and filled with shame. We are already free from that. The debt has already been paid. So in Romans uh chapter 8 verse 1 I'm going to read this to you. It says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. No condemnation. So if you're holding on to condemnation or shame about something, that is not from God. That's what I want you to get first and foremost. According to Isaiah chapter 53, verse 3 through 6, and many other passages actually uh, throughout the New Testament, it understands this basic principle. Jesus bore our sin and the guilty condemnation that accompanies our sin by what he did on the cross. So, in other words, you do not have to hold on to any of this sort of guilt or shame or condemnation or anything like that whatsoever in your past. Right there, that is cause for celebration because we all have something in our past that makes us feel heavy burdened. But knowing this truth, we can release it. We don't have to hold on and walk around like that. 
<clears throat> and that is going to put us in a position to then move forward. So we need to believe in Jesus and what he did for us and then display our faith in him by getting rid of the sin and then not holding on to that guilt that usually accompanies sin. So this is great news that the debt has already been paid. God has already made us free from all that guilt and all that shame. So once we ask for forgiveness for whatever it is that we did that holds us kind of in this place of feeling bad or condemned or shame, he has forgiven us and he removes all of that guilt too. So don't turn around after you've been forgiven and the guilt has been removed and grab onto it again and pull that back into your brand new future. Don't remind God of things that he has already forgotten about. Why would we do that? We've already been forgiven. We can now let that go. So this is something that I want you to know about God, that he is faithful and he is just, <clears throat> and he forgives all of sin, all of them. And he continues to cleanse us of all of our unrighteousness and every sinful thing. By the way, for that, I want you to see John chapter one, verse nine. So if you ask for forgiveness, and if you turn away from that sin, you are forgiven. So there is no need to then carry it further into your future. Do not remind God of what he has already forgotten about. Okay? That's, number, that's a couple things right there. And why is it important that we know our sin is forgiven? Because sin is what holds us back in life. It holds us down. It presses us down. So if we then are forgiven, then we are no longer held down by whatever it is that we are dealing with. So how does then condemnation differ from conviction? I'm going to explain it to you this way. And this is so important that we understand this. We need forgiveness every day of our lives. In one way or another, we are going to need to be forgiven in little things or, you know, whatever, every single day. The Holy Spirit then sets off an alarm in our conscience that we have kind of, that we've done something wrong. We can kind of feel it in our soul. We've done something wrong. So once we get that little flag in our conscience from the Holy Spirit, he alarms it in there that we've done something wrong. He does that so we can then recognize it. And then we have the opportunity right away to repent. We immediately receive receive forgiveness immediately. And then out of gratitude for that mercy and that forgiveness, we can then turn away from sin, whatever that was. So when we ask for forgiveness, he cleanses us from that sin and restores us right again. So why does the Holy Spirit, who lives inside of every believer, have the power to cleanse us from all that sin? And it is because of what Jesus did on the cross. It's that simple. When we are made known of what we did wrong in our heart, by the way, in our conscience, that process is called conviction. That is healthy. The alarm is sounded within us. We turn away from our sin. That is conviction. It's very similar to think of, I want you to think about you parents out there with, with kids. It is very similar to how our parents convict a son or a daughter if they do something wrong. And why is it that they convict them? Because they love them that much, right? They are convicted of what they do wrong because you are loved. That is the same conviction type of conviction directly from God for you because he loves you. And the reason why we're building this foundation today is because when we understand the difference between condemnation and conviction, if we understand that condemnation is not from God and we're feeling condemned about something, we now can release it. When we release it, we can finally advance. When we understand that we're being convicted of something, we can take that as a gift. I'm going to get into that a little bit more in just a second. And that can actually help us to move forward. Condemnation. The feeling of to suffer for, for pr prolonged periods of time from guilt or some heavy cloud, that is not from God. That is actually from the enemy. God will never, ever call us to stand still in suffering, in anguish, in doubt, and being pushed down in shame. That is not, those feelings are not from God. That's from the enemy trying to stall you from accepting the grace and forgiveness that you 
are given and moving forward into your God-given destiny. You see, this is what the devil does not want. He does not want you moving forward in God's destiny for your life. So he's going to try to convince you that you should feel filled with guilt and condemnation. But condemnation, as we know now, is not from God. And the devil knows. If you feel condemned, you can't move forward. You will stay in the same place. And that's where he wants you. God, though, says, no, you are already forgiven. So rise up. It is time to move onward and it is time to move upward. Get up, dust off your knees. On we go. That's how it works. And you're given forgiveness and we turn away from sin because of that mercy, that love and that forgiveness. We are so grateful. We turn away from what it is that is holding us back. Often when we are convicted of something, uh, some sin that, that's that been kind of plaguing our lives, when we are being convicted from God of that, it might get a little annoying as he deals with us because we are in essence trying to hold on to something in our lives that God knows is not good for us. He does not want that in our lives. Condemnation, on the other hand, will make us feel very dark and press us down. It's not going to feel like a healthy, loving, parental type of conviction, it's going to feel heavy. That's condemnation. It won't feel like purification. It's going to feel ugly and dark. Condemnation, that's what it does. Heavy, depressing, dark. That's not from God. Conviction is, condemnation is not. So until we admit our sin and become ready to actually turn from it and ask God for forgiveness, we are going to feel this kind of pressure that kind of squeezes in on us. And that pressure is an urging sensation that is actually telling us that we are doing something that we shouldn't. Again, that's that healthy conviction. But as soon as we get into agreement with God and our peace will eventually return, because once we get into agreement, our life immediately is going, once we can be corrected, once we are wise enough and we lay our pride and ego down and we stop holding on to whatever it is that we've been trying to hang on to, and we get into agreement with God, our peace then, our hearts are going to feel light again and peace returns. And then God can continue then to work in our lives and move us forward in the direction, by the way, that we are actually supposed to go in. The devil knows that condemnation and shame also keep us, by the way, from approaching God in prayer. So when we are actually stuck in that dark cloud, we won't move close to God with requests and prayer. Feeling bad about ourselves, feeling guilty or thinking that God is angry with us about something that happened in our past or that we're doing right now keeps us separated from him because we shrink back. God never leaves us. We end up with our sin, whatever it is that we're wrestling with. We withdraw from him because of guilt or fear or whatever. So this is exactly why it is so important then to discern the truth and know the difference between God's loving conviction and the devil's condemnation that's going to hold you down. So if you heed those loving warnings of conviction, if you then turn away from whatever it is that God is working on you with, he is going to lift you up and out of that sin and on the right path again, which obviously is going to give us our peace back. It's going to make us feel light and airy. And on the other end, condemnation is going to do just the opposite. And now we know that that's never from God. So here's another thing. When you pray for other people to change, someone that is not on the right path, something isn't right with them, whatever it is, or they've hurt hurt you, and you are praying for other people to change. And when the Holy Spirit convicts them of their sin, many times they are going to start acting out even worse than they were before. And that's not because your prayers were ineffective. Their behavior is actually a good sign that God is working on them, convicting them, and they are getting agitated. They're getting annoyed. So sometimes we will see that when we actually pray for other people, people before we actually see the fruits of that prayer we start to see them act out in different ways and again that is okay that does not mean your prayers are ineffective sometimes that's just how it works but I also want to say this that if we are going to pray for other people to change when we pray that prayer get ready for God to also then turn it on us and do a work in us also Whatever we need to change, he's going to begin to work on as we are praying for other people to change as well. 
I mean, it's as simple as this. We can't just pray for all these other people, expecting all these other people to change and really believe that it's always someone else and not ourselves. God is going to look at us too. He is going to make us look at ourselves in the mirror. Simply put, I always think of it like, like this. God is a very just God. So if we pray for others to change, get ready for God to deal with us also. And you know what? That is okay. We should want that. Because the more he deals with us and works on us to be the person that he is actually calling us to be, the sooner we then have victory. The sooner we get into his will for our lives is the sooner that we get on our our lives on the right page. And that's when things start to get really, really awesome. That's when we start to move towards the life that we have wanted, dreamt about, and felt that God's seed was planted deep in us maybe long ago. And finally, we are going to be able to get on that path because now we are allowing his conviction to come in and basically clean house. Want to do something really bold? When you pray, and hopefully, by the way, that is regularly, and when you're praying to him, I would challenge you if you want to be really bold to say, God, convict me of any of my sins. Cleanse any of the sins that I'm harboring right now that you know are not good for my life. Cleanse those out of me. Ask him to come into you and clean house. Clean up that mess. Realizing that conviction might be uncomfortable, but it is actually a huge blessing. We don't want God to leave us alone. We want him to get into our mess and clean that stuff up so then we can get on the right path in agreement with him and get on living the life that we actually need. You do not need to be perfect or sinless or blameless to go to prayer and God about anything. And I'm not just talking about going to God in the big things. You can go to God in the small things. He wants that relationship with you. If only perfect, blameless people could pray and have their answers uh, received, then nobody would pray because God already knows that no one is perfect. He knows that. So I want to quickly, now that we understand the difference between condemnation that is not from God and conviction that is lovingly from God, convicting anything, any bad word that's in your life out of it so he can get you on the path he needs you to be. I want to say a quick word on being free from shame that is not shame of your own doing. So Isaiah chapter 54 verse 4 says that as long as we are walking upright in the ways that we are supposed to, we do not have to ever fear others and what they might do to us because we will not be put to shame. Let that really sink into you. That is a promise from God to you. God has promised to remove all shame and dishonors unrighteously done to you from other people out of your life. In fact, God has promised that in that place, after removing shame, he will pour in place of it a, quote, two-fold blessing into your life. Any shame we have been put through unjustly at the hands of others, God will restore us and give us double for what we have lost This is music to so many people's ears that feel that something was done to them unfairly, unjustly, maybe even behind closed doors and nobody knows it. It is between you and God. God is your vindicator. And he is saying to you, not only just saying, he is promising to you that he will restore and give double for what you have lost. Again, see Isaiah chapter 61 verse 7 for that. I want you to take your stand in God's word and all that he promises for you. And by the way, in order to do that, you are going to have to know God's word. You're going to have to really get in his word and study some of this. Our weekly uh, half hour lunch break chat, it is awesome. And it is kind of a power session, a little bit of a reset button. But we need more than that. We need to be spending time in this word every day so that when things come up against us, we can easily go to that bank and withdraw what's already in there. We can't withdraw what's not already in there. We need it to be in there planted. The word of God promises in us so that when things come up, we can tap into that and pull it out. I want you to ask him to do 
a healing miracle in your mind and in your emotions and let him come into your life, clean house and do what he has come to do. Heal your broken heart, bind up your wounds, proclaim freedom, give you joy, peace, forgiveness, mercy, so that you will be called a tree of righteousness, strong and magnificent and in right standing with God. So I want you today to determine that from this moment on, by the way, I'm so proud of you. I'm reading all of your guys' comments here and also over to my left. I'll get back to you guys a little bit later, but some of the things you guys say is just so awesome and I'm so proud of you. Um, I want you to determine from this moment on that you're going to reject the roots of bitterness, anger, doubt, shame, reject judging other people, and you're going to start to water the roots of joy, peace, love, patience, gentleness, understanding in your own life. And that is going to give you from God what you actually need. You need to understand that you are loved as is. You are loved right now by God as is. Everything about you, you are loved as you are now. So now we let that conviction come into our lives, clean house, shape it up a little bit. We get into agreement with God. So then, then our life can really start to flourish. But it's important that you understand right now that you are loved more than you know as you are right now. God loves you as is. We're not forgiven because of the good works that we do, and we are not loved more because of what we do ourselves. We are loved because God is love and what Jesus did on the cross for all of us. We then transform and we do better because of our deep gratitude for that unconditional love and mercy and forgiveness and all he does for us. And in return, it's cyclical. The more our prayers are heard, listened, our relationship strengthened, and life gets awesome. By faith, you can actually declare that you are healed from the pains and the wounds of the past. I don't know all that you guys have went through, and I will never know. But anything that you have went through, you can declare today that you have been healed from the pains of the past and you are forgiven. And you are already set free to live a new life of total joy and wholeness. If you understand that condemnation, forget about it. That is not from God. Conviction, yes. We get into agreement with him. We let him root that stuff out. That's when our lives get awesome. Begin to say this today all week and every day. If God is for me, who then can be against me? God loves me just as I am. And because of that, you know what? I can love me too. I am a work in progress and God loves me as is. Remember, conviction is a gift from God because it leads us to a refined life so that we can have the very best life. Let that conviction lift you to brand new levels. Don't resist it. Receive it. Learn from it, grow from it, give thanks for it. It's for your benefit. It's your blessing. And when we work with him, our life changes for the better. His mercy and forgiveness is new every single day. And every single day is a brand new day. Three takeaways for this week that I want you to think about. Number one, condemnation, never from God. God convicts his children, you, because conviction is actually a blessing. When we pray for others, we should do, we absolutely should, but in return, just know that when we pray for others, God will also work with us and God will remove shame from your life and pay you back double for what has been stolen from you. That is his promise to you and that is good news. Thank him for that. Five scriptures were used today, Isaiah chapters 53 through 61, 1 John uh, chapter 1 verse 9, Romans chapter 8 verse one. And you guys, let's see, that was about what? 30 minutes. We made it all of that information in a half an hour, our power lunch, our spiritual training that is so incredibly important. They may just seem like words as we're listening to them sometimes and kind of 
cherry picking and relating to some things and maybe not some other things, but they are planting seeds in us that will literally transform our lives. That does it for our spiritual training today. Thank you for joining me this week on Wednesday Wisdom. I am so, so proud of you every single week. The best training you could ever do to transform your life is this one. Scripturally bound, founded training in our spiritual lives so that no matter what's going on in life, it doesn't matter if it's good, bad, whatever, we will feel balanced and happy once we really start to understand these little golden nuggets that have always just been sitting in that book on the coffee table, which we're going to pull out and start reading more. If you need to reach me, you can email me at mejohntv at gmail.com. And if please, if you think this message could help someone else, please share it with them as well. I am so excited for you, friends. The future is going to be so bright. Same time, same place, next week. Sure. I love you. In Swedish, we say, I love you so much. Have an awesome day. I will see you again, like I said, next week. Proud of you. Love you guys. See you later.